Garrett Bess is here. He's the VP of Government Relations and Communications at Heritage Action for America, which is connected to the Heritage Foundation. What's up, Garrett? How are you? I'm doing well. How's it going? Good, man. So what? Uh, let's do like top three things, maybe topics or policy that you think Trump needs to do tonight, needs to bring up tonight to be effective. Yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty simple. And and uh, first off, thanks for having me on to, to talk about yeah. this. I think this is going to be the last big shot um, to capture a, a broad ranging audience uh, for the president. And um, so I think I think he needs to do a couple of things. One is we know for sure uh, that whenever health care is the main topic on people's minds, that Democrats tend to do better. And that's why everything um, has been geared around the conversation, even around COVID, is just health care generally. They're trying to make it into the Affordable Care Act, pre-existing conditions. Um, Amy Coney Barrett hearing has been about health care. Um, so, so Democrats are really trying to drive that narrative. They know they do better when that's the topic. And so the president really needs to uh, do a couple of things. He needs to um, not belabor the health care discussion. He needs to be uh, clear that he has a plan, and, and we do. There, there's uh, conservative organizations like ours that are ready to step in with with um, with options for the president when he wins his uh, re-election. Um, and so, but just then move on because where he really does well is on uh, the economic recovery from COVID. So anytime, um, anytime it's about businesses reopening and how we reopen society and we reopen our schools and that kind of discussion, the president does much better. Um, mm. He needs to talk about the peace and security of our neighborhoods. That's been tamped down by the media over the past uh, six weeks or so when the uh, Republican National Convention uh, in August highlighted the violence that we were seeing on our screens and highlighted the response to that, uh, the law and order response that is necessary to tap that down. Um, the president did very well. Matter of fact, you saw, you, you see it in many polls and particularly in battleground states, you see the president sort of uh, having a little bit of a jump in the polling. And since then, uh, that, that conversation has been tamped down. So he needs to focus on, um, you know, the peace and security of our neighborhoods. And then, uh, you know, thirdly, I think, uh, and, and along with the neighborhoods, I would say maybe preserving our institutions, sort of work that narrative in there as well, because that's a, that's a um, target of the left. And uh, as, as long as he can be the, the person standing in the way of a left-wing government uh, that aligns with Antifa and BLM, uh, then he'll be he'll be in in good shape, um, and then so I certainly, I think he needs to use uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee. About ten minutes ago, reported out Amy Coney Barrett to the floor. Uh, we're getting ready to go down and hold a rally. That's why I'm dressed in a rally garb here. Um, but we expect that vote on Monday, and so tonight the president has the opportunity to drive home the fact that he has chosen. I mean, just a roundly uh, accepted. Uh, qualified and poignant and graceful uh, justice to the U.S. Supreme Court and a Biden Kamala Harris administration will do no such thing. And so this is this is a big win of the past four years, and he needs he needs to hammer that point home. All right, I like all these. Let's go down these again real quick. So on the health care, yeah. I thought Trump Trump did not a good job with that at the town hall. Um, he was way too vague. If I remember, he was just like. We have a plan, it'll be better. We have a plan, it'll be better. I think people just want something, right? Can you just come up with yeah. like one thing? Like even like four years ago, he was like, oh, we'll get rid of the state boundaries, right? And like, even if people didn't really understand what that meant, at least it was like, oh, a thing. I think people need right. one. So, so we'll look for that tonight. Uh, I love what you said about reopening, right? Because that's aspirational. And, and I think people really want to reopen. And do you guys have any, I don't want to say polling, but just, just your vibe, like, what the breakdown is of, of that across the country because it's so political now, right? Like Democrats, yeah. like I'm here in California, right? I mean, Democrats here are scared to go outside and Disneyland's going to be closed till next summer. Uh, yeah. So do you think that's a winning issue when he talks about reopening? Yes, I, I think um, particularly you're starting to see movement uh, in minority likely voters. So uh, black males in particular and Hispanics across the board. And this is a single biggest issue for them is um, the fact that uh, these small businesses that people pour their livelihoods into starting and keeping going are being hollowed out. And they're being hollowed out by government uh, fiat. They're, they're not really being hollowed out because um, our economy went through some sort of natural sort of uh, downturn. They're being hollowed out because the government won't let them work. And um, I, think, I think President Trump needs to take up the mantle of, of being their advocate. 
that um, yeah. people people's livelihoods and their futures are being crushed under uh, what what initially was a short term slow the spread, give our hospitals time to deal with uh, the health impact to now being not until one single person is done getting sick, uh, we're gonna shut everybody down. Um, yeah, and he needs to make that so clear tonight. Yeah, to your question about polling, we are actually in the field in four battleground states, uh, Wisconsin, Iowa, Pennsylvania, North Carolina. We've been, uh, we've, this has been a long-term plan for us over, the, over this year. And we have contacted, uh, probably by election day, we'll have contacted about 5 million swing and low propensity Trump voters in those four states. And one thing that, that has just started to pick up um, in those four states from the people that we have on the ground walking and knocking on doors is the fact that now parents are six, eight, nine weeks into their schools being closed again. And they're having to deal with their particularly young children at home. And they're not... We, we can discuss the public education system and how you might reform it all day long in another conversation. But right now, students are not even getting real access to that, uh, particularly at the younger grades. And that is starting to resonate with people. Um, again, it, it's, I, I hesitate to call it polling, but it's a conversation that we are constantly running into. Uh, and interestingly enough, the heaviest part of that conversation is occurring in Western Pennsylvania just from the people that, that, that we have on the ground. So interesting. Uh, uh, I, I want to keep thing to that's, talk about. No, I would love to hear the president talk about opening up schools. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I'm fascinated by yeah. how you identify a low propensity Trump voter. What does that, what does that person look like? Yeah. So we, uh, we worked with, um, an organization that, that does extensive polling, um, that was sort of on the front edge of, of picking up that, President Trump was going to not only win the Republican nomination, but do very well in the general election. So about two years ago, uh, we started uh, working with this organization to, um, first off, uh, the, f the first sort of round was to identify a common uh, set of, of policy objectives that both sort of the traditional three legs of the stool Republican base like, so uh, reforming our uh, secondary education system, um, taking on China, um, reinvigorating the American economy through um, on-the-job training and, and trades programs and those kinds of things, um, and a couple other a couple other items such as uh, stemming the, the flow of illegal immigration, that kind of thing. So we we polled the, we we asked a huge set of people in the Republican base what their policy goals were, and then we started um, expanding out. We actually built out a demographic model, and I, I think it's I think it's pretty easy to pick up on the highlights of that model. Um, people that are sort of, uh, A, have not been engaged in presidential years of 2012, 2008, maybe even further back, but were engaged in 2016, but maybe didn't vote in 2018. So sort of, sort of that, that type of voting um, pattern, mm. but also um, people that are, um, you know, they maybe didn't complete a four-year college degree uh, maybe they're in a um, outside of an urban center, so they don't necessarily have access to all the uh, the boom in recent years in in, in urban communities. Um, and so, sort of built that model out, and that's helped us uh, identify a whole series of people that we think um, could could swing these. Uh, we worked in four states, but across the nation, yeah. could swing okay, other so states. So that, that's that's super interesting. So, what would be maybe one issue? that a low propensity Trump voter might be more inter disproportionately interested in than like your hardcore Trump voter? Well, that's what Trump a, could address I, tonight, obviously. Yeah, I, I think, um, the, the, I don't think that there's much of a policy difference. So there's, there's sort of, um, uh, you see that uh, with the low propensity Trump voter, maybe uh, sort of a, and this is gonna be my caricature, but like sort of the throw the hands up in the air, it's not worth it type of a, type of a mentality. Mm. You convince them that no, the things that you care about, the president is fighting for, organizations like ours are fighting for, and the, the, the base thing that you need to do is show up and vote, and I promise you it will matter. And so sort of yeah. connecting them to the policy, connecting them to the outcome, and then following up continuously to make sure that they remain connected. Um, and, and, and our goal is, is just through November 3rd, but, but even beyond. Sure. Could Trump really appeal to them by 
painting a very clear picture of what, of what a Kamala presidency and a Joe Biden presidency could look like, like when it comes to our cities, Antifa, and higher taxes, and no fracking. Like, I think he would just need to drive home the, uh, the dystopian future that could be, right? That, would that fire up those people? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, basically, it is an old political adage, but everybody sort of boasts their pocketbooks. Um, it's not uh, sort of it, it, these people, we're not finding that they really want the government to sort of hand out checks. They really want opportunity. And they believe that they are being left out of the opportunity in the country. And so the president needs to sort of uh, going back sort of to the terminology we were using earlier for the school openings, he needs to be their advocate that that he is going to make sure that they have the same opportunities that their parents had and that other people in other areas of the country have. Um, I think that I think that these people are often looking at the coastal states um, and sort of the tech centers and wondering like, what has happened to, to my neighborhood? And so going in and, and convincing them that there's a future in America for them as well, um, if, if they engage, I think that's the, the roadmap. And, and when there's riots in Kenosha and Lancaster, it's like, geez, yeah. what is happening in my neighborhood? Um, okay, I, Garrett, I appreciate you because now I'm gonna watch the debate coming up here from the perspective of a, a low propensity Trump voter, as opposed to like a, a hardcore Trump fan. Is, is he appealing to like the base? Uh, I wanna, I'm gonna try to look at it from a different perspective. I appreciate that. Uh, Garrett Best sure. from Heritage Action. You go to heritageaction.com. Thank you, Garrett, appreciate you. Yeah, thank you.